All right, this is Joe Crisera, and welcome to the Service MVP podcast. And we have with us a very special guest. His name is Tim Brown from the Hook Agency. Uh, when he works with the HVAC companies, that's called himself Tim Hook. <laughs> Just trying to get those brand impressions. You got to get those brand impressions. Now everyone sees Hook more often. Exactly, exactly. Well, thanks, Tim, for being here. Tim, uh, uh, Tim's going to show us th th three things that service contractors can do to differentiate and stand out from their competition, because that's really, the, to me, the essence of marketing, which is Tim's niche. Tim, why don't you tell us about how you first got involved with the service business and how you got involved with the uh, helping people differentiate and market their services to the public? Yeah, I uh, used to work at a different marketing agency back in the day for a good three years after college, and they didn't have any specialty, so they had no niche. Uh, we accepted all types of businesses, and we basically would do anything anybody asked us to. So we had no specialty, and we didn't turn anything down. <laughs> and I think that that inspired me to, to as I went out on my own, have a, a smaller list of services, one, so we like we only have three services, SEO, PPC, and websites, but also come up with a niche <laughs> so that we could be as good as we possibly could be at, at a few uh, things, which just happened to be the case that when I went out on my own, the three out of my first five customers, because I didn't I didn't turn anyone down right away, but I um, three out of my first five customers were home service businesses or contractors. So I, and I liked them. I happened to like them. Like uh, I, I enjoyed spending time with them. I was doing video at that time and I would be out there on the job sites and, and different things and, and in houses and videoing and things like that. And I enjoyed spending time with them. And so as my business coach told me to niche, all right, it's time. And then my wife finally pulled the trigger in 2021. She said, no more. She said, uh, we're not taking anybody else besides home service businesses. And that was uh, July 2021. We have we have niching day now where the, we celebrate every July 1 when we nice. niched into home services. And um, so, yeah, basically that was kind of a cr you know, crazy moments. We've had a number like we had a, an influencer and mm -hmm. roofing that kind of swooped us up and took us under his wing. Around right when COVID hit, I was in Mexico and he put out a video about us and he's huge, like huge roofing YouTuber. And mm -hmm. so we got, we kind of snowballed in roofing. Uh, so we have a lot of roofing clients, but as the, one of the other key things here is that we've, um, you kind of get a little clustered too many clients in one area and something like that. So mm -hmm. we're trying to balance that by pushing right now very hard into HVAC and plumbing. We have six or seven clients there and we're kind of, we're going, it's going to be quick this year. We, we know that we're, when we put our mind to something that we're capable, we're not that we're trying, we're not one of those companies that's trying to have hundreds and hundreds of clients. Mm -hmm. We have like a, a one to two, one to three person ratio. So one employee per like, two or three clients we yeah, we yeah, like yeah. That. we like that niche kind of like that um the boutique feel the high customer yeah, service yeah. thing and you know that's how we got our 100 plus five star reviews from home service businesses we're definitely very grateful um for all the stuff we learned in roofing and we're, we're also like man you guys have some very advanced things over here in hvac and plumbing that i'm kind of trying to bring back to some of our roofers too because like i think that the level, like, I like the 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 peer groups that mm -hmm. you guys have, like like the Next Stars and this you know, the Service Nation and all these, and just all the peer peer to peer stuff that you guys are doing, the the um, stuff like that. We don't. There's not that much in roofing over in yeah. roofing, so I'm excited about that. But I'm also hoping to bring some of what we know in roofing over here to HVAC and Plumbing. Like, from what I understand, it's almost like a little different and kind of crazy to do door knocking over here at Rage Track and Plumbing. And like, and roofing, that's their bread and butter. Like we're the, that's our biggest competitor. And so right. like maybe more, maybe bringing some of that context and some of the other things that roofers do well over here too. And otherwise we're just here to learn. I'm not expecting, like, I know a lot of things about marketing and getting the word out, but I'm really this year, I'm spending time with clients, hopefully out in homes and kind of doing some video and stuff like that with, um, Thielen Mechanical here in Minnesota. 
And so I'm going to be on the job and learning and just soaking it up. And I think that that's something that we do that I like to think is my personal differentiation, mm -hmm. which is that I actually am a sponge and I'm very curious. And yeah. so I'm going to be very curious and understand the problems and pain points of HVAC and uh, plumbing contractors over this next year. I, I think that's one thing that drew my attention to you was when you interviewed me at the, uh, uh, one of the events we recently did, and it was like, I noticed that you're definitely a student of uh, people and definitely are, uh, you ask very good questions. So I think that's one Thank of your you. strengths and one of your things there. Uh, you're here to tell us three things that we a service contractor can do, whether it's plumbing, HVAC, electrical, or roofing, or whatever, or garage yeah. doors as well. Yep. Uh, what, what are three things they can do to differentiate and stand out from the competition? Yep. Uh, let's start with the first thing there, Tim. What's one thing you could recommend yeah. that you could do to look a little different? So if nothing else, you know, I'm going to skip around here a little bit. I'm a little ADD. Excuse me, Joe. I That's appreciate okay. you keeping me on track. But I love reviews, right? I we, we push reviews. We strongly recommend. This is nothing revolutionary. Pushing on reviews, right? Um, in if you only do one thing this year in your marketing, get a really good video testimonial from a customer, a smiling, happy, ideal customer, and get a video of them on your website, right on the front page. Um, my first suggestion though, is to read through your reviews. I'm like a, a reviews and like focusing on reviews and testimonials, but then also reading them, mm -hmm. really understanding, go back through your last 30 reviews what are three things that people are saying that are different about your company? Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have it in our mind that these are our differentiating things. But then when we read the reviews, what are they really saying? Yeah. Well, what are your customers really saying? And is there actual language that you can pull out? Not just like, you know, the restate what they're saying. Can you actually pull a piece of that review and use it as a differentiating feature. Talking, you know, like a talking point that becomes a yeah. common talking point that the company uh, can kind of gather around and kind of uh, rally around that talking point that becomes something nor normally that here's what we do that's different about yeah. the things that, that the competition does. Exactly. And they will tell you because <clears throat> You know, Joe, you, you and I both know they're frustrated with the competition, right? They're, they're frustrated with the fact they didn't get a phone call back. They're frustrated. And when they, when they have a, a service MVP company, when they have a, a strong customer service company, they have relief mm -hmm. and you can feel that relief in the reviews. And when it's emotional, when it's tinged with like, I was frustrated, but I experienced this and like, they actually called me back and use that language, use the relief of their, their, what they're saying and use that. And you can put the actual text as like headlines on the website as well. So I'm essentially pushing you. This first one is really pushing you to use and extract more from the reviews and mirror it back to them on the website, help them imagine the ideal future of experiencing that relief by showing them other people that have experienced that relief before. That is amazing. You know, and actually we do uh, track along with you on that, Tim, because here at Service MVP, we do teach people uh, how do they ask for that review at the end, at the end mm -hmm. of the process. We, even during the process, sometimes we'll be like, uh, so if you had to give me, a, if you had to give me a, between one and five stars based on what you've experienced today, what do you, what would you give me on this? Mm. I give you five stars, I give you seven. Some people mm -hmm. say, well, good. I mean, I mean, you wouldn't do a, if I asked you to do a selfie video, you wouldn't do that, would you? Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do it. And so <laughs> then they do a selfie. And so basically we teach people how to do that actually. That's and cool. we have a lot of them here ourselves. We, uh, although I, uh, Tim also caught my attention because he actually took one of our clients and did it, did that testimonial for our services at service MVP. Mm -hmm. So he's a product of the product. He yeah. actually, if you want to go to Service MVP uh, webpage, you search for it. You'll see a guy from Rise and Shine Garage Doors who, who isn't even a client of Tim's yet. Yeah. Uh, but he, but he, did, he sat there and had a conversation about uh, the Service MVP services and how it's a higher investment, but it's worth the money and things like that. So and they showed it because they were they were doing um, role play and obviously 
you're recommending to do role play regularly within your team. Do more role play. We love role play. I use role play for leadership, not just sales, right? Oh, we totally I use all role play for tons of stuff in my company. Love it, love it, love it. And I got to tell you, so go watch that video with Rise and Shine, the Rise and Shine Garage Door Tour. It's really good. And there's a lot of other little system stuff that's in there that I'm sure some of it's from you. They're role playing. And in that role play, my video guy yesterday just sh like literally had a snippet and I was so Uncle Joe in, the, and I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt. It was just funny that he repeated back a very Uncle Joe thing, which was the, so out of all the things that I've shared with you today, what would you like me to remove? If, uh -huh. you, if you need a cheaper price. Uh -huh. What would you like me to remove? And he said that in for one of our videos that we're about yeah, to do. Yeah. He was like, he was helping create the script for one of our videos. Uh -huh. And um, he essentially re said that. So it made such an impression. It's coming from somebody else at a mm -hmm. company, but it's from you. And it made such an impression that it stuck up, it stuck out to him and he's using it in our stuff. Isn't that cool? I love that. That is cool. That is cool. What I always, it comes around, what always comes around, goes around. I think when we put good vibes out there and try to help people, uh, I, that's, that's what I try and do. I try to make sure like you are too. I know that you're kind of like a brother from another mother, which is that you're just trying to help people first. And then yeah. of course, people would ask more about how can we invest in more of that help uh, second. Mm -hmm. I think. I think that there's that trust, a funnel of trust, right? That you got to get, yeah. uh, which I think you've done a great job with uh, in a very short period of time, Tim. Where Thank you so you've got much. some incredible, incredible people uh, that I've seen on the on the landscape who have uh, who trust you uh, yeah. by kind of there's something up. There's something up. There's kind of like that thing that people kind of emerges like I don't know. There's just something about the guy that I like or whatever that I trust, yeah. right? And most likely it's because you're a student and you are able to take all these bits of information and use them to become a, a product of the product in a way. Does that make sense? Totally. And I think also, and I'm trying to learn this because I have in the past, marketing is about getting attention, right? You got to get as much, there's a component of this that you have to get as much attention as you possibly can. But I am not one that believes that all attention is good attention. Mm -hmm. So... There's something else there, which is your scaling relationships mm. in marketing. And you have to, at the underlying of all this stuff, if we get the word out about our product and service, there has to be a good product there and there has to be good relationships there. So in addition to whatever else I'm going to say today, you have to be stoking referral partnerships. You have to be stoking relationships with other home service businesses in your community. And hopefully that is part of what you're pushing out there to the world. So the principle that I'm trying to apply as I'm getting the word out about hook services, which is connecting with the other people of influence in the space, just had Mike Prankovich on, um, on the, you know, I know he's on the plumbing side. He is, He's totally this in his yeah, yeah, yeah. community. He has got the tightest. He's got these relationships. His his competitors are referring him. He's part of all of the, the community groups. He is referring. He is trusted. And so that is ultimately at the core of what everyone should be doing <clears throat> with marketing is the relationship side and the referral side. Well, well as we both know, uh, one of our uh, uh, friends that we both have is Tommy Mello from mm -hmm. Able Garage Door. He said... Uh, Tommy, how do you build a billion dollar business? He said, not by yourself. You have to have a network of friends and people who are uh, pushing your services with you. And yeah. I think that's a, I call it the top 100 list where you create. Now, a lot of times people do that on accident, what you're saying. So, by the way, mm -hmm. that's number two, right? The number two thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll be doing that. So, uh, keeping us on track there. Uh, yes. But, but they, you know, doing it on accident, I think some people have an innate ability to connect with other people and suggest, uh, refer them, right? And also by by obligation, people start referring you as well uh, to create that relationship. But, but I think, you know, we did a thing called the top 100 list. I said, my yeah. goal is to get 100 people in my community that I'm going to connect with, that I'm going to refer actively to services that I believe in, that I'm going to refer to my community whenever I have a chance. And I'm going to yeah. let you know that I referred this customer to you uh, mm -hmm. make sure that to please take care of this person 
I even scheduled the call for people. Like I had a concrete guy. I knew I said, yeah, I know a concrete guy. Let me go ahead and schedule it for you. So I called the concrete guys and said, Hey, listen, just, so you know, I'm scheduling this for you. So make sure you give them the VIP treatment. And Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Joe. And of course now he felt obligated that he wound up giving me seven from that one concrete thing I did to him. He gave me 17 customers in the next month. You believe that? <laughs> like he felt so obligated yeah. to give me back on that. So I think yeah. other people, doing things for other people, yeah. the service you give, that's one of the things I think that comes back to you in droves, Tim. What do you think of that? Oh, absolutely. I've got like, I'm trying to do it all the first quarter of like just the second half of my Thursday is just about like referring more. I'm, I'm, um, I'm calling it like, I can't remember what I, my name for. I always name things to remember, but it's like mm -hmm. something like the referral abundance plan yeah, because, yeah. and it's not nothing about me. Like, I don't think it's all, always one-to-one -one or one to 17, which is cool. <laughs> it's super cool. Yeah, yeah. But it, it is crazy. If you go out and spend time every week to try to refer 10 other home service businesses in your area, and you do tell them about it when you do it, you do want to tell people. <laughs> Right. Exactly. You do want to tell me, you don't, you do want to get credit in their mind. The other yeah. one is, and we are way off my, my original plan three, but I, uh, you should be doing this in Facebook groups and next door as well. If you, if you, if you're the main marketing person on your team, or if you have a key marketing person on your team, you should be referring in Facebook groups to other home service businesses and then tagging the person so that they know that you referred. My, my plan, my plan second one, Joe, was you want to boil down these three key things that you got from your reviews and not in a corporate way or not in a way that all your, your competitors say, like, let's say customer service focused, no offense. We're all saying that and it's all bullshit. Well, it's not all bullshit. We're all customer fo focused. I get it. Yeah. Everyone one is it's literally the the it's the only way you'd have a business is customer service <laughs> you know like so that's like that's not extra but if you told me if you told me that a, a hvac contractor was available by phone anytime and i was on the flight recently with the hvac contractor and she said oh yeah we have somebody on the on the phones like literally overnight and I have to do my shift this weekend or whatever. And she was a part owner. And I was like, that's incredible. Holy shit. Um, I'm not saying you got to do that, but if you told me that, that would be a massive differentiating feature. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at this point you have to get things that like stick out and are actually different. So what can your competitor not say and then boil it down in a way that you can repeat often. So if I told you I was available by phone anytime, or if I told you we are going to be within 10 minutes of your service window or whatever, like whatever it is, that's very specific. And if it's very specific, it's going to be stickier. And then you re-say it all the time. So mm -hmm. you've got to keep on repeating it. And it's the same with leadership, right, Joe? Like we have to keep repeating stuff over and over and over again and in five different ways. Right. We don't just say it to our people. And then like one time at a, a, I don't know, do you do traction or level 10 meetings or anything like that? I don't know if you do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like if you had your level 10 meeting yeah. and you, yeah. you got your main meeting with your team every week or whatever, and you, you <clears> say it one time and they're going to remember it. Or do you have to say it five different ways? I, I put it in Slack. I might make a video version of it. I'm going to say it at the meeting. I'm going to put it on the wall. Maybe. <laughs> you know, like, I get it. It reminds me, Tim, of a thing when I was start, when I first started out back in the uh, 1980s, or I was going back uh, several decades now. But when I first started my heating and air conditioning company. I, I lucked into a phrase that really worked. It, it was said, I put a thing with my photograph because I, I wasn't in, in my community. So I put my photograph in the advertisement because nobody knew who home comfort heating and cooling was. So I said, Crisera Home Comfort, Joe Crisera Home Comfort. Uh, and then I put my photo in it and it said, I will personally see to your satisfaction. Interesting thing is those words, I don't know what it was. Uh, whenever we ask people, hey, what's the reason that you love? So, so it was a reason why you use our company. We'd ask people the reason why you use our company. 
Well, obviously, Joe personally sees to our satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Even though I wasn't doing all the calls, I got like 17 employees yeah. now after a couple of years of doing that. By mm -hmm. 1990, I had like 17 employees. And people are like, you know, what I like is the fact that Joe personally sees to my satisfaction, even yeah. though I have 17 people attending yeah. to satisfaction. But that it was like a phrase that everybody glommed on to. Yeah. And when they had a problem, they'd say the same thing, Tim. They go, <laughs> Joe Cressera is supposed to personally see to my satisfaction. Yeah. And so yeah. the truthfully was because it, you know, truthfully though, Tim, when some when something goes bad, you, the owner of a hook agency, are going to personally see to that Fair satisfaction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, exactly. kind of service MVP, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Yeah. Right? So why not? I think that's the thing about it, guys. Everybody does heroic service out there. Why aren't you just publicizing that you're doing that level mm -hmm. of service? That's the thing. Uh, to, so take the thing that you're doing, the superhuman effort of the grinding it out and tell people how you're grinding mm -hmm. it out in a way for them. Does it make sense to them? Exactly. Exactly. And I I was just talking to somebody and he was telling me, he's like, man, you're shameless on social media. You, you put yourself out there so much and I don't even know. I, don't, I would never want to do that. And I wish I could help people with that. I wish I could break you free from holding yourself back because you're scared of somebody messing with you. The mm -hmm. per the owner, if you're an owner on the come up, you're in the like 1 million and you're going to 10 million phase. Your, your personal brand could be such a differentiating feature. Just like Joe's saying, like I, I like to put it on the website, the smile, like uh, the family, the, the family that owns the business with the kids and everything. And then a, a big signature. I like to make that the kind of like a front and center thing because mm -hmm. it's certainly like it taps into the heartstrings family owned and we serve your family. So I love stuff like that, but putting yourself out there, like being okay with it. Don't hold back. You are full of interesting, interesting stories, interesting pieces. Like people are, People are holding themselves back. They don't want to use their personal Facebook. They don't want to use their personal brand. They don't want to put their face on the website. They don't want to put their signature on the website. They don't want to personally guarantee it. Why? Because they're scared of those moments. You're going to have those moments anyways. Right. Whether you're going you to have, yeah, it's like you're, you're having these moments. Why not, why not publicize those moments? Yeah. You're, those are the things that you're doing that do differentiate yourself. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I wish I had more it, right? time, but what is, what's the third thing? We're going to move on to number three. Yes. The, third, the third thing is building it into series. And I believe people should be utilizing their personal brand on Facebook. I do that, obviously. I, I, personal, I personally push myself out there a lot. If you could do that, then this would be worth it. And you could do it on the page too. But you know how hard it is to get the page visibility. The page yep. visibility is really hard. So I'm going to suggest that you do this on your personal thing. Could you take those three differentiating features that you boiled down from the reviews and build it into your key marketing activities? You could do a what's wrong with this Wednesdays. You could do a, if you had a bunch of reviews, let's say my client, I was looking, I, I went and got an example from Thielen Mechanical. They talked about prompt a lot, prompt. That's a good word. And they said it that way, prompt. And it's different than many companies like them. Could Maybe we could do fast fix Fridays. And you come up with like this, even if you don't say it every time, oh, this is what's wrong with this Wednesdays or fast mm -hmm. fix Fridays, you focus on something that was broken that you fixed and it was fast. Yeah. And yeah. if it was on what's wrong with this Wednesday, you could do the same thing. Like we saw a competitor and everyone's scared about this, but I'm not. We saw a competitor come out and they did something and it wasn't fully comprehensive. It wasn't a comprehensive thing. And we want you to know that we're comprehensive. So here we do a live on Wednesdays. We do a real video on Friday. And then we do like a review on Tuesday or something. Mm -hmm. So you come up with this rhythm that every Wednesday, Friday, and Tuesday, you're doing these three things. And you come up with them related to um, your reviews. And that will help you solidify those things. Because like I said, if you say it once, they're not going to remember it. But if they have every single Friday, you're talking about the fast fix. You're talking about how prompt you are. You're, you're kind of like, hey, so just remind them every single time you're going live and you say, by the way, everyone always loves that we're prompt. 
we went out and fixed this thing. The water heater was doing this, whatever, and we fixed it. So basically come up with the, the reason that these weekly series is what I'm suggesting is because in the, the hubbub of business, especially if it's you as the owner, but even if it's a marketing manager or somebody internally, it's very hard to stick with the social media stuff. It feels like an extra thing. But yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. branding thing feels like kind of fluffy <clears throat> sometimes but if you have these series then it goes into like the the subconscious part of the brain and we don't have to we don't have to remember it it's habits habits i'm sure everyone's thinking about this right now it's the beginning of the year we're all like working on our habits why are habits so good habits are so good cuz then we don't have to think about it every single time it's just right, what right. we do that's why it's so good so what we want to do is build these three differentiating features into your habits so that you don't have to remind yourself to tell the world that you're prompt that you already have fast fix fridays to do that that's amazing that's amazing i think you know and truthfully there's never been a better time tim in our in our generation of being being alive uh, where in the TikTok generation, the Facebook real generation, we're not talking about producing a 10 minute video every week. Ooh, yeah. We're, no. we're talking about producing 30 to 45 seconds. Yes. <laughs> or whatever. Just yeah. the thought of the day that uh, maybe a theme of the week or a motivation Monday. Hey, here's what I'm motivated this week because it's cold out. I want to make sure the homeowners of Minnesota get their hose bibs taken off their hoses on the plumbing call yep. or whatever. Hey, check if you got icicles that could be causing roof damage. Uh, just get yourself motivated to make sure that you get you know, break up those ice dams so that your, nobody slips on their sidewalks. You know, something like that. You just get the good sick. news. The good news is, is like DIY takes a long time to make a DIY. If I have to tell you how to fix it personally, mm -hmm. like if I have yep. to walk a homeowner through fixing this, yep. then yeah, it's going to take me a half an hour. But if I just have to say, this is what it was like, and this is what it's like now, yeah, like this is what it, this was the problem, and this was a quick fix. If I if I just have to give you a visual, yeah, of a broken and fixed, that's not a half an hour. That could be an exactly. minute. And people exactly. people are doing almost too much DIY content because no offense, the homeowners that you want don't want to DIY anyways. And yeah. I, I'm not going to like I do DIY, but it's partly just I like to be known for the guy that gives it all away. So I yeah. do it, but you don't have to do that. Don't follow me because I spend way too much time on social media. Do the fat, do the the before and after more mindset. And I'm I not like, saying like just that. a visual before and after. I'm saying like a I love little that. video because yeah. yeah. it could yeah. be like we're at a call with no heat today. And then uh, let's see what I can do to get this thing up and running. And then another yep. video says Look, get, and then you got the flames on. Look at that, guys. Yeah. Got the heat working, just the problem in the ignition system. That's why you got to yeah. get your furnace maintained to get that done. Uh, let's get exactly. it let's get into maintenance so we get that stuff done, that kind of a thing there. Just a quick, exactly. fun video like that. And you can kind of put it in a, you can put it in like a, this is what we did tone. So it doesn't feel like just pure promotion, like promotion. Yeah. But it's basically, you know, before and after. <laughs> right. Because I, I mean, love, like, love, yeah. Like the turn, like a turnaround in a way. How do we yeah. turn this around from something that was dysfunctional to something that was working? I, I get, I guess you call that the formula is called agitation and solution. You're agitating yes. with the negative part of it. Here's the thing that's yep. dead, not working. The roof is, look at, look at that roof is, uh, uh, the, the shingles are falling off or that rot, the, the front of the thing is rotting from the ice dam. Yep. Uh, look, look what we did after we fixed this problem. We, uh, put that put that flashing in there, which fixed the problem. And uh, we can do the same thing for anybody's roof if you need that kind of service. Kind of a thing. I love it's the I love yeah. the idea of the agitation too, because they have the pro like they might have the problem, but they you know you have to zoom in on it. You know what I mean? Like and and the beautiful the beautiful part about a phone and a camera is like we really can like they they're not sitting down there. No offense, I'm not down in my furnace room just like on my knees like picking through stuff. But you have that opportunity and all, you, all we have to do is zoom in on problems. So if you just think about it that way as zooming in on problems, that's probably the number one component of, of uh, 
marketing is zooming in on really it's it's kind of it's kind of sad in a way like it's sad that that's like my job but it really is just zooming in on problems well tim I, without without problems yeah. there would not be a need for blue collar service contractors if, yeah, exactly. if everything worked perfect all the time yeah, yeah. Uh, understand that you're in the both you're in both the problem and the solution business yeah. right identifying and diagnosing problems but yeah. making it more clear, like showing people an element of the problem they didn't really know existed or didn't realize it was that bad. Because a lot of times homeowners normalize the problem, right? Like, yeah. oh, yeah, that, that thing's always been falling apart. It's always been yeah. falling apart like that. It's kind of a thing, I, right? To make it apparent. This way. Talking to this dude, Ali Osha. Sorry, I'm sorry if I spoke over you a little bit there. I okay. this dude, Ali Osha from um, Endless Possibilities. It's a floor coating thing out of... Mm -hmm um over here in minnesota and he his floor coatings is like three four k and i like i really like I, the hour i spent with him i spent at a home service freedom event and i just the whole time i just kept on trying to understand like the problem because mm -hmm. really the core of marketing is really we need to understand what the real problem in the homeowner's mind is. And like in his case, it is a little bit more nuanced, right? Like in some of these trades, it's a little bit more nuanced. It's a little less like blatant. Like if your heat's out, your heat's out. We need heat. If it, you know it's hot and there's no AC, it's suffering, right? It's, you don't have a roof. It's leaking. <clears throat> terrible, right? So yep. plumbing, you can't, whatever. So in this case, I just said, okay, so... We really zoomed in on it. it's like it's ugly, but the ugly ugly is not enough. You know, what I mean? like, is it is it dangerous? Like if you have a a holy floor, like is it dangerous? Is it is there more likely to be pests and bugs if there's holes in your cement? And like we have to like really understand what at at the extreme level if this was neglected, where this is going, and frankly, we need to make it visual. Right, of what right. it looks like. That's why that's why so many like commercials that work really like almost exaggerate. We exaggerate the problem yes, of where yes. it will go if you don't maintain it. Right. Where it will go is you're in the coat in the living room with your child that's blue. You know, OK, don't do that. But you know what I'm saying? Like you have to like imagine mm. where this will go if the situation is not fixed. Well, one thing you've helped me imagine today is. Uh, a, a podcast that was supposed to be 25 minutes has gone on for almost an hour. So, uh, <laughs> so thank you. Yes, you you broke you broke my podcast. Thanks, Tim. For uh, yeah, you're all good. Well, you're, I'll you're, give you. Uh, how long podcast. did it? How long did this one go for? I have no idea, but we're having a good. I, I, I had such a good time. I could talk to you all day. So, Joe, <laughs> I'll have you on mine. You can go as long as you want. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. Uh, people are gonna have to listen for. I don't think people are gonna be able to stop listening. So that's okay. gonna be. Fun. Yeah. Anyway, Tim, uh, how do people get a hold of you at the Hook Agency? Give us a little bit of a, this is the promo part, Tim, where you can uh, yeah. finally say, what you, how do people get a hold of you? And what can they do to uh, be able to tap into your kind of energy? Sure. Uh, hookagency.com, Hook Agency all over social. We do SEO, getting higher in the organic <clears throat> part of search. We do paid ads on Google. That Those ads are at the top. And then websites that are beautiful and persuasive and built for search. Because ultimately, if you make a beautiful website, but no one can find it, it's kind of worthless. So we Got help it. people get found. That's our main thing. It's, it tends to be a, a lot of content and stuff like that that we do for our clients. And we're grateful to serve uh, and appreciate you having me on, brother. Thanks a lot, Tim. Uh, we'll see you in the near future. I'm very sure at some other event. And yeah, I'll be on your podcast and we'll I'll be able to give my, uh, my brand a BS. So. Yes, sir. <laughs> Love it. Thanks a lot, buddy. Have a great one. Yes, sir. Thank you.